Lemon and Amiga present. A play diet video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Once again, welcome to another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review. This time we'll be checking out Carrier Command, published by Rainbird in 1988. The game begins with a menu, and if you leave it alone for a while, you'll get some introduction music as well. This was created by David Whittaker and also Dave Law. Carry Command was developed by Real Time Games, I've no idea who they might be, and it's their only release on the Amiga. This introduction reminds me of games like Star Glider, and Dave Law also created the music for Star Glider as well. On that title screen we get to start a strategy game, an action game, and we're loading an old game. And for the strategy game, that's the game that we'll be going for at the moment. So you can see that we have a basic layout, unlabeled buttons, and a view in front of us. By clicking on that map, we can check out our vicinity. This is us, we are around Vulcan Island, and Vulcan Island has got a runway and the square you can see is actually the perimeter of the island and you can see by zooming out we can see that the archipelago stretches all the way out into the far distance where we'll find the enemy and if we zoom in on this particular one, Hades, I think that's the enemy home base so I think if you take over Hades then that's game over and the enemy will be sending an enemy carrier out to us to attack us and so you can choose to avoid the carrier or you can choose to take it on so for now we've only got one one island in our vicinity but there are a few dotted around so what we can do is we can move off to them and you can see by clicking on the map that will highlight across we can then program that into the navi computer and then hopefully if we hold down the right mouse button and click on that and move to the right we can now angle our boat our carrier away from our home island pointing at towards the open water and then hopefully once we are happy with that we can then click the right mouse button again to switch that over back to manual mode and then we can click on the centering button to also center that we can then increase the speed manually as well and you can see we can do that with the buttons and the depth counter will then begin to rise and once the depth is up there slightly then we can auto engage our autopilot and that will take us to the island you can see we can also activate our depth gun from here as well and from here we can use that as an observation post and we can also zoom in and out as well using our deck gun so just like das boat that we reviewed we also have a number of things operational on our carrier and so you can see that we can lock that into place so we can also fire flares from here as well and guided missiles which i don't think we'll be getting to see too much of on this particular playthrough that's very helpful against the enemy carrier you can guide homing missiles in there and defense drones we'll be coming back to that defense drones a bit later on so you can see quite a few things can be activated once we enter our defense area and for now the forward view only reveals what's on the horizon checking out that map now we're now moving away from that place and you can see course set autopilot is now engaged and that will now hopefully set off towards that target and there is quite a big area to cover in this game and of course if you select the other scenario 
then that puts us right into the middle of the war when everybody's taking maybe 20 islands apiece and then you have to battle it out between you and this one is more like a strategy game where you get to take your time and move over to the next objective so the enemy carrier will be around it's much faster than our carrier and much stronger as well and it's got unlimited resources more or less unless you cut off its supply line and we can cut off its supply line by attacking an enemy island so you can see there's quite some distance to go this game unfortunately plays in real time and as far as I know there is no way to speed that real time up the speed count you can see on the bottom of the screen I think is the play time it's already on maximum so let's just leave that on maximum for now you can see we really want to take an arc out and produce a defensive barrier around ourselves at least the first three islands and then the next two and then the next six after that and then by defending those places hopefully with our range of weaponry you can see we've got short range heat seeking missiles I think therefore maybe the tanks you can see long range missiles as well and so you can check out all of our weapons we've got multi impact bomb there which is I think well, maybe that's a flight weapon. We've also got a laser beam as well for, I think, ground attacks. And we've got high-powered laser beam as well for an aviator for attack and air attack. And the most important thing are these AAVs. They basically are command centers. And we'll need to build them on every single island in order to take it over. These are decoy flares, and you might have seen once we use the deck gun, we can deploy those decoy flares. And those aren't very important for now. The most important thing is our assault vehicle, known as the Walrus, and that's a land based assault vehicle. And in the air, we get a Manta, and we'll be seeing both of those. We can also access our supply priorities from here as well. And at the beginning of the game, every single island will be able to produce something, produce some resources. It will also be able to manufacture something as a factory. And it will also have some defensive qualities as well. So, right from the start, we can choose to build something. And definitely the AACs, the automatic, basically, command post module, will need to put those on high. And I've selected to build three of them. And for the rest, for now, we can leave those on low priority or, well, for the walruses, I'll just put that on medium, but I haven't ordered any, so none will get built. The fuel supply priority is the most fuel goes to the carrier, and then you can leave the other ones on stock for now. But I'm just going to put that on medium, and then supply transfer, fuel transfer, we don't need to worry about those yet. And so that's everything set up, hopefully, in our stocks and inventory and the fuel is all right for now the next button is telling us about any messages and we haven't got any yet so it's back to that map screen now halfway through it by clicking on the controller that returns us back to manual control of whatever screen that we've selected on the left in this case we have the forward view selected and we can also access the deck gun and the walrus bay as well of which we've got four of them and we can select between those the manta bay as well the manta hanger we've got four mantas that we can choose from and arm them from here and then the disc icon is actually to load and save so it's usually a good idea to put ourselves on forward view so that we can see where we are and then return back to that map luckily once we get out into open water the carrier will move at full speed and so we can shorten the gap and shorten that time you can see well the speed's rising up there and that we've reset ourselves on a further target so that's as fast as we can go using our carrier next we can also check out the damage status and just like perhaps games like robocop we can check out a wireframe model of things going on and this will show a damage report it will show red if these things are damaged again just like the boat das boot that will show us a damage report on those and we can also set priorities as well of which we shall see we can repair things in a particular order and i just leave those on standard for now 
and of course you can change those if any of those get damaged. Most of the time, virtually all of the time, nothing on the carrier is going to get damaged unless we are attacked by a missile or at the enemy carrier. So at this stage everything is going to be safe as we approach our first island, it's called Elwood, not particularly because of the Blues Brothers but because it's full of woodland. So here it is, we can see it on the horizon and we've switched the autopilot on so we can get there. And if we want to zoom in on that location we can also use the deck gun as well and that means we can check it out. And for now we can see our position is ticking down on the map at the bottom and you can see that there is a kind of a square the corner angles of a square dotted around that's just the vicinity that we can see I think of the visual range once we get there and we're centred on the area and so this is where we're heading now Elwood Island, our bearing is 009 that means, well, we're virtually heading north. So, by clicking on the opposite end of our carrier and clicking to program that and then activating the autopilot, what that will do is that will rotate the entire carrier around 180 degrees. So, you don't have to manually do that. If the marker is pointing forwards and then you put it to the rear of the carrier and then program that in, that will simply turn it around anticipating that we'll be moving forwards but we're not going to be moving forwards so you can see on the bottom left corner is a radar the square is of course the island so we can leave it to rotate itself on its own automatically until the island is directly behind us and then we can press the centering button or we can press the A to turn off the autopilot or we can press the palm of the hand and that's all stop, everything stops. So we're now moving past now the area where we want to be and so it's entirely possible to do that. Let's switch off the autopilot and centre the area and then manually we can use the mouse to drag that back so that that thing is square on behind us. And that isn't too important at this stage but it just means that we can get a quick getaway later on. Now what do we need to do? Well we need to put that in reverse now so that we can go backwards and that will mean that we can reverse our way to the island. So that's full speed reverse at the moment and that carries another difficulty because we can't see where we are going. So again back to that deck gun and we can now turn around and see the island. We can now scout it out. In this case it's woodland area and we can even use the deck gun on these woods to try to thin them out before we've even landed. We can even manually adjust that so we can get everything spot on to the target. Of course the deck gun is better aimed at huge solid buildings rather than trees and I think magnification 2 is probably best to use if you are aiming at things otherwise you're probably a bit too far away. Now we can press the stop and look at that the depth is just above the red so we aren't grounded yet. So let's head on into the walrus bait where we can take on our payload, we'll need a laser and we'll also need the automatic command center builder in this case it's saying it's a resource center and we can carry other things as well but we can change that to defense center or a factory island if we want to do that and because we haven't got any resources at the moment it's probably a good idea to build the resource center but once you click on the exit icon and that will automatically exit out of the back of the carrier then press A to take off the automatic guidance control because that thing will be on automatic pilot when it leaves so you have to click that off and then aim for the beach once we get there it will automatically land and I didn't see what that said on the bottom of the screen but something is apparently an enemy island so the enemy are really getting there now 
and you can see that if we go anywhere near the beach that will automatically take us back off of it again so once you've landed the walrus it's a good idea to creep forward a bit just look we are moving forward away from that beach and then by pressing the left mouse button i think it is you can then aim towards these trees the closer we are to them the easier it is to destroy them and we'll need to clear some trees to clear enough area to put the command bunker down because if you don't that command bunker won't get built and it doesn't tell us how many trees that we're meant to destroy and all that will do is come up with an error if you don't destroy enough of them so that's one drawback of the game and then by selecting the pod and by pressing the right mouse button that will then drop the command center whatever we've decided to build on the island that will then slowly build up in its own time just like a mercenary game and that will get filled in with solid graphics a bit later but if you're not careful you'll bump into it and that means that it takes damage and we take damage as well and once the walrus is damaged that blows up so we'll just have to buy another one or build another one so you can see we can leave that to get on with building now it is building so hopefully that's all right hopefully we've cleared enough of the area for that to be building all upon its own automatically now the next problem is getting this thing lined up back with the rear of the carrier and again if you've automatically turned that thing around or manually turned it around that just makes that job much easier let's line up with that and center our controls so that it's pointing directly at the back of the ship and then if we move to the walrus bay again look at the behind we can then click on the automatic docking button and as long as we are behind that will then automatically dock into the back of the carrier so then once that's docked we can then return back to the map screen again and hopefully by zooming in we can now see that that's our first island or rather our second one now taken over on this screen on the map screen we can also press a number of other buttons as well that will help us and you can click on the of course zoom in and out and if we click on the resources tab then you can see how everything's linked up together we've got one factory island on the go and our stockpile island is vulcan which is the one that we started with so if we zoom in on our stockpile island we can see that that's got all our stocks on there and computers and everything else that we've built up and developed so far so in order to reach that stock we'd have to transfer it by clicking on the program it sees that our stockpile island is now elwood so that means that if we've built some resources and fuel and mantas you'll have to transfer all of those to the stockpile island which is usually the one that we are adjacent to and if the enemy is just about to take over your stockpile island then it's a good idea to move that somewhere else but we can't collect anything unless it's our stockpile island because we've just taken over an island it won't contain anything of its own until the base is built so we've got one factory going on with plenty of fuel left in everything we don't have to resupply with anything at the moment everything is in tip-top condition so now we'll need to move on to our next island you can see we can even blow up the base that we've only just built as well if we really want to do that and you can see that it is building up something on the island it's built a, a landing strip it looks like it's built a command bunker which is armored it's got some trees on there as well which hopefully won't hinder us too much because once things start building the natives can chop them trees down but it might slow down development you can also see another bunker there i think that's a warehouse and that will take some time to build so you can see we can now leave that alone as we head on to our other location an obsidian that has been taken by the enemy so the enemy can take on islands twice as quickly as we can that means it's not going to be long before the enemy attacks so we're now heading towards the next base we've programmed it in clicked on program and then instigated that automatic pilot so we can leave that to do that and you can see that progress of the enemy it's already taken over maybe 12 islands in the space of this game 
just like Elite, we can check out our stocks and our trade routes. And there isn't too much stocks and trading involved in this game, but that just gives away where we're supposed to go next. So if you go north and then south and collect these two islands, and then if you move over and get the next two, then they're fairly safe from the enemy. And then when the enemy comes, you can hopefully block them off mid-route. So let's check out the next island. And it helps to be fairly close to the island, but we'll need to go to the south of it, which makes sure that we can get a quick getaway onto the third island. So let's just program that in. And you can see that island there. It's, well, out there in the middle of nowhere, but we're still going to need to commandeer it. And we don't really need to worry about defence at the moment. We really need to start building up those resources. So it's Bernie Island. It's in green, which usually means it's forested, but it could have a volcano on there as well. And so let's make our way to the south of the island. And let's see where we are using our deck gun. Again, the whole place is full of trees, so it's not going to take long to take over this island. It's not like we've got any enemy to take over at this point. So the carrier has reached its destination. And once it's moving backwards, we can allow it to do that automatically. We don't have to do anything else because the engines are already turning and the ship's already turning. So we can leave it to do that and then just press that centering button when everything's lined up. And it isn't essential to observe complete perfect parallel parking in this case. But if it is parallel, then at least it can make it easier finding the carrier from the walrus as it leaves the island and it can also mean that the carrier is well a lot easier to access the island if it's all lined up perfectly and so let's just do that and you can see the depth gauge is falling don't run the ground otherwise it's probably game over so let's quickly stop that all engines stop just in time and now we've stopped good so we should hopefully have arrived so factory let's get a factory on there and again we could have done with a resource center and this is basically my play you never know with this game but definitely if you get the resources together before the factory then the factory's got something to build although every island in the game will be able to produce resources and some factory items and some defense so the priority is basically whatever you choose to build but every island in the game will be able to accommodate development it's just that that will be very slow development on islands which don't specialize in a particular thing We can even click on the radar on and off, not that that shows as much on this particular map because on these forested islands it doesn't even show them on the radar. But we can see that we're now in the middle of the island so hopefully we can stop and maybe drop the thing from here, right click, ASCB has now been dropped so automatic constructed base, whatever that is, that's now been dropped in a clear area. And we can carry on clearing trees if we really want to do that. That could make it a bit easier. And the more trees you clear, the better. But I'm probably thinking that that's enough at the moment. So let's hightail it out of there. And with the radar on, you can see the carrier is in this up corner. So now if I aim towards that, unfortunately it's pointing the wrong way. So hopefully we can line up with the rear. Well, it's not too bad actually. Let's line up with the rear, just like FA-18 Interceptor, we'll have to get that approach vector correct. And then once we've lined that up, the docking sequence shouldn't be too bad. We can get some speed going on as well, and we can crash into things and blow up 
so I've pressed the automatic computer on for some reason and now I can't do anything so let's switch that off and let's leave this island Bernie is now a friendly island we've now taken it over that will now appear in blue on the map got that docked let's quickly move back to the map and I think there are some quick keys that we can press to zoom in and out and let's program that to be the home base the stockpile island first of all and I don't think we need to collect anything from it but let's just check it out anyway that's the carrier well Let's see, do we need any resources? Everything's still there. We've only got two left. We're still doing all right for fuel. We've only got two base builders left. And everything else, well, we're still going to need some fuel. So let's transfer. Well, we can transfer some fuel. There is a bit of fuel on that stockpile now that we've built it up. So by clicking on the resupply drone, that will then launch. A resupply drone from the actual island and it's coming over now it's like a, a square red square shape and that's actually a submarine when that gets anywhere near us it will line up with the back of our carrier and then we've instructed it to drop off some fuel so that will then line up and slot in just like a Nintendo game you can even see by looking at the rear that's now sunk that's hopefully dropped off the fuel that we've ordered so let's just have a look at our statistics and yes everything's now topped up to maximum so we've now got that from our supplies and if we hadn't moved our supply dump ahead to this island then we wouldn't have been able to get that fuel and it does take some time to move our stockpile to the island but it doesn't take too long maybe a minute or so and Treasure Island has now been taken over by the enemy. That's a subtle joke by the programmers of this game. So, leaving this one behind now, it's already building up its resources, building up its stock, and maybe those trees that we left will help the resource management. And so I think we've built two factories now, and not a single resource centre. So hopefully the third one, I'll remember to make that a resource centre. So let's have a look. Let's see, it looks like it's already heading in the right direction. The depth gauge is, well, we're heading towards the island, so it's going down a bit because we're moving off the corner, but now it's going up rapidly. Ah, so that should be, in our speed should increase as well whilst the depth rises. So let's move on to the next island, it's Cerebus. And let's get somewhere near it. Cerebus, so that's the next one in line, we're approaching it now, and the next island that we need to get to, I think is in the, well, northeast, so hopefully if we come in from the north here, and head towards the east of the island, and, well, that's our marker reached, so let's... Well, what are we doing now? It looks like we're turning around at the moment. Let's just speed up that footage. And so we're, we've headed to the north of the island. We're now turning around and we're heading back from the north onto the island so that we can set off northeast next time. We can now check it out using the deck gun. And let's see, we can zoom in and out. And lo and behold, trees. Trees, 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 so you know the formula by now. Let's go back to the Walrus Bay, and this time, let's see, defense, factory, resource, there it is. Let's put a resource in there. We're still going to need to take the laser in order to knock the trees out, and that's all we need for right now. You can see the state of repair is 50% because we've crashed into a number of things, including the resource centers that we're supposed to be able to build. So let's now eject the walrus out the back of the carrier and put the radar on so we have a clue where we're going and I think that one under the radar is actually a rear view camera as well for some reason we can look behind ourselves so here we are now this is now the third island let's 
suit it up. And let's select now to deploy our base. And that's another island taken over by the enemy. So the enemy is really getting through them now. I'm not really moved anywhere much. But finally, we've got the resource center sorted out. So hopefully we can leave that to do that. And we can head on back to the carrier. So I think it comes up on the screen if it wasn't able to build anything. So it looks like we've dropped our base right on the corner of the island behind us. I don't know whether that's good or not. Maybe you're supposed to build right in the middle of it. But hopefully it'll do for now. So once we're inside the cone, it says in the bottom corner whether we're inside the cone or not. And we can change our view as well once it's automatically docking. So that's there. And then the next thing is check on the map. And so far it's still in green. That's not a good thing, but there it is, blue. Blue, so can our program rerouting? So that stockpile is now Cerebus. Well, it looks like we've run the wrong thing here, we run the character out. There you go. So it's now Cerebus and it's now Resource Center. So what have we got? We've now got one command module being able to be built. And the stockpile doesn't get any fuel and our supply drone can't collect any. Oh, well, there it is, it's just popped up. Like I said, it takes about a minute to transfer all the resources over to our new island, once it is our stockpile island. And usually once we get the carrier fuel, which we weren't desperate for it, but we might as well get it anyway. And, well, fuel transfer. And that's all we can do at the moment. So let's pull out the resupply pod. Let's launch that. And we're really going to have to develop some more supply centers because we've only got one left. The lasers and things like that aren't too much of a problem. So let's go back to our supply priorities. Let's see what it's built, if it's built any. And we probably need some fuel. Well, that's a fuel pod. It's not actually fuel. I put five in there thinking that it was actual fuel, but it isn't. That's just a fuel pod. So we're going to have to sort that out a bit later. So we've got the resources and we've got the stockpile now on this island. And that makes trilateral. So you can look at that. The enemy's trade routes. It's there burrowing into the green zone faster than you can think. And you can see that the enemy island there is right in the middle. So it's not impossible to consider if we close off a few of these islands to break its stockpile off. Then the enemy carrier might run out of fuel, right, run out of oil movements, it might run out of anything, so it is possible if you go all the way up there. So the next decision is what do we want to do? We want to go to both of these islands. And so at the moment we've got enough, just enough stores to take us up to those islands and to take over a new one. But we're down to our last command supply pod. So what do I do in this case where it looks like we're now moving to the nearest island because that would make more sense and hopefully click the autopilot on so that wherever we are yeah we can now head straight towards it and so we can now leave that to do that walrus in the dock stay to repair I don't think you can repair oh yeah you can look there's a spanner in the bottom corner so we can actually repair the walruses in the dock so we can do that if we want to do that and I definitely recommend doing that rather than building one from scratch which is probably what we're attempting to do at the moment so I'm scratching my head at the moment wondering wondering if we really need to do something maximum three maximum five and it's not telling us that it's actually built any of those supply pods so, well, now that we've got a resource factory and two factory islands, I'm presuming now that that is going to speed up development of those and let's hope that it delivers them to the next island once we get there. So, let's just get there. This is Carissa. And, of course, we're going to the top corner so we can make a quick escape onto the next island from here because 
It's critical to get on with it. There isn't much going on at this point. But once the enemy islands start building up around us and we'll need defence grids sorting out, then things really do ramp up. And this game is meant to be played over the long haul, maybe a week or something like that, so that you can slowly build things up. Of course, I've combined maybe two hours of footage down to about an hour and twenty at the moment. So, you see, the enemy's now halfway along the archipelago. That's the bad news. The good news is we've still got maybe half an hour to go before it gets here. So, we need to get a defensive wall built. You can see everything's clustering around an area. So, if we capture them in a certain order, hopefully we can defend it. So, this is Carissa and I'm fully expecting it to be full of trees I can't say anything at the moment but that's probably what's going to happen so let's just fast forward a little bit so that we can actually see what's going on and defence, let's turn this into a defensive island because we don't want to leave ourselves too much undefended we'll need to put a defence in there every so often in case the enemy decides to attack So let's zoom off towards the island, blow up as much as we can. And then drop it and then return back to the laser again. You can see the laser in the bottom corner. We can also fire a missile. We can activate the pod which is underneath us. The automatic docking sequence of the automatic pilot is the A and I think the reverse icon simply turns us around on the spot so that's basically that and so it's important to return back to the laser if you want to use that armament it's pretty rudimentary but then this did come out in 1988 this came out before virtually anything else 3D on the Amiga Hunter and things like that and I think Indy 500 also came out in 1988, so this is the dawn of the 3D games. So it's outside the docking core and outside the rocking core. And unfortunately, you're going to have to make sure that the walrus is pointing towards the back of the carrier for it to register as being inside the docking core. If you do, then it will be picked up, and if you don't, it won't. Carissa is now a friendly island, that's a good thing. So, let's angle that in without crashing. And it still says it's outside of the docking cone. And the docking cone is just like that A cone, so you'll have to get it in the middle of it. We're still outside of it, we'll have to get it in the middle of it, pointing in the right direction, in order for that to be picked up. So, again, the approach to these things is vital, because if you don't approach them, good enough, then you'll certainly be wasting time. And the moment this game is fairly easy peasy, all we've done is launch a few walruses out of the back of a carrier. The code for this game was Graham Anderson, who moved on to Hired Guns after this, and there are certainly tons of fans of Hired Guns, Unfortunately, probably we're not going to get around to reviewing it. And Ian Moran, also he went on to Midnight Resistance, I think in 1988, The Untouchables for Ocean, Hudson Hawk, and also Robocop 2, that we've seen, unfortunately, already. So, this is Carissa, it's now our stockpile island, and we're going to need it. We've got one defence island, one resource, and two factories built now and all linked up using our trade route so we've now used up that defence pod so we can organise a fuel transfer at the moment that's not really essential and so let's just get that underway but we really need to figure out why it's not building up any units so there's definitely a way to do it and you have to wait for all those units to arrive on the island that you were upon so hopefully, supply priorities, let's just have a look. Hopefully this will have ticked down, will it? Maximum three, no, it's still there, maximum five. So let's put that on low priority then. 
Let's put everything on low and let's see if we can figure out how we're supposed to do it. Supply transfer completed. So we've got the fuel in. That was the easy bit. And what can we do here? It was three. Let's call it three again. Exit out from that. And we still haven't got any built. So we really need to be clicking on supply transfer at the moment. You can see our score here. It does have a score in this game. I've been playing it for almost an hour. We've now got five islands. We can see the C dots and everything else going on. That's no problem. Um, we can save load from here as well. So let's just save it up. And I think we can even give up as well. There's a white flag in the top corner. But for now, let's get around to click on that supply transfer. That means that whatever we built, we can then put that onto the transfer supply drone, in which case we've now got three of them. And it's now saying that we've built all five of the fuel pods that we really wanted to build. I don't know why. I think that's a resupply pod if one of our walruses runs out of fuel. And the resupply pod is not currently available, so we're going to have to wait for it. And so... All we need to do now is basically wait for it because we'll have to wait for it to return back to the island again. And because we've got some fuel, it will probably be making its way out there. So we've got tons of fuel in the stockpile. What can we do? All we can do is keep ordering it. It's not currently available. What we need to do is to keep ordering it and eventually, once the fuel, well, once the supply drone has reached the island, we can then order it and it'll come over and we can get some stock because yeah maximum three let's just make sure that there's another three being built and we could build any number of things some more missiles some more rays some more mantas but we're not going to do that at the moment so let's just see if we can see if that resupply drone's made it back to the island so that we can order another one i can't actually see anything at the moment and we can also well, we can have a look at the island in the Manta if we want to do that. We can weigh that down with all kinds of armaments and weapons and lasers. And usually the ground attack lasers are pretty standard and a couple of missiles as well. So by clicking on the exterior, click on launch. And then click on the launch to launch it. That should mean it raises out of the carrier bed and launches on automatic pilot. This is our Manta and you can see an airport, or at least a runway, has been built now because this is a military island that we've decided to build. And I'm using an all 30 at the moment, you can see some defences towers dotted around and some ground guns as well, the yellow ground guns, but for now what we're going to do is demonstrate the landing capabilities what we can do is aim towards the end of that runway and once it's all lined up and aimed towards the end of that runway hopefully as soon as we touch down man to one has landed on the runway that will then automatically lines up with the docking pod at the end of the runway and then it will stop us and that will just like interceptor refuel and rearm the craft we can then launch and that will then automatically launch that craft off the runway using the automatic pilot and from there we can set off now back to that carrier so i can't see if the submersible has reached us or not and so a bit like the walrus you're still gonna have to aim for the top of that carrier for the automatic docking sequence and again that's take off and that's land so we can press on that land in his automatic so if we go back to this view hopefully it will hover above because it's a VTOL aircraft it will simply hover above the place where it's meant to land vertical takeoff and landing we can then dock that back with the carrier put that back in the hangar so that's our ship and still saying that the supply drone is not available but we can't move to the next island until it is available so i'd recommend at this stage is to get the supply first and then terminus is now an enemy island 
get the supply in first and then if you need fuel wait till the next island because it's looking like it's taking ah finally finally launched it's looking like it's taking a few minutes if you don't do that before you get any stock so here it is the supply is coming up and i'm not sure whether it can take fuel and armaments at the same time it would be great if it does perhaps it does so perhaps you can kill both birds with one single stone something to check out what we do doing is we've managed to get it to launch and that means it's coming in so if we check out the man's docking bay we can see that coming in and so it's lining up here it is let's put that in like a cartridge and then that will sink and hopefully now yes we've now got three base builders so we're not worried about anything else at the moment, just building those base builders. So what can we do? We need to get here first of all, but then again if we leave the island extraneous in the south, well, mm, I think I still think I'm going to go here because that's our defensive line. We've built one now military island and that will stop the enemy from getting to our resource islands that we've built earlier on. So if it manages to get here, it should mean that that will keep the enemy carrier at bay so that it can't take over my entire archipelago. If we look at that map, you can see that we can build kind of a bridgehead across those two things and stop the enemy from getting through it so kind of a, a defensive unit so it would probably be a good idea to build another defensive unit I'm not quite sure because the enemy is quite still far away from us at the moment and i'm looking but yeah the enemy's a bit too far away from us so has it built any of these i've absolutely no idea what it's built it would be easier if it said instead of maximum built and then you can see how many's not built and how many's built in our particular stores uh, but anyway let's just set that on two for a maximum and now that we have some resources hopefully we can spend that building a few more things up it doesn't help with the icons not actually telling you what they are but you can see that these are lasers that's a bomb so well you're not going to really need lasers unless you lose a manta and then you're going to lose the craft and the lasers and any bombs that you've got upon it so the only reason why you'd build more armaments is simply because you lost the tanks or the airplane in the first place so that's the reason for that you can see well we're now really getting there now and the enemy well it's still going to take another 10 20 minutes for it to get over here but it's ignoring all these other islands so it shouldn't be too hard to get behind it and cut off its supply lines that means it needs to go backwards it'll stop attacking our bases and it will go backwards to restock itself and to re-establish those supply lines in the meantime we can then move ahead on the map and cut its supply lines off further ahead so that means it has to backtrack even further into its own territory in order to stop that from happening and by that time we could have been somewhere near the enemy's main base knock that out and that's all there is to it so the graphics in this game was created by Herman Serrano and you might remember he created the title page for Exile as well as well as the title page for this these are vector graphics so he didn't create any graphics in the game itself but you might be surprised to learn that Herman Serrano actually coded weird dreams for Firebird in 1989 so anybody who remembers Weird Dreams which has been on the list to cover since forever and we're probably still not going to do it but Herman created that game and again the music David Whittaker from APB and other games that we've seen already um, Dogs of War and Dave Lowe created the other music on the title page from F1GP Juessa or Juessa or however you pronounce that 
it looks like it's a, a nice easy island so let's see yep yeah, another defense i think just so that we can put everything else behind the defensive barrier and now let's take off and head towards the island and you would think at this stage with the island fairly clear it says oh it's not suitable to drop something on this particular spot so that means we're gonna have to carry on blowing things up and maybe i didn't notice that or maybe i did let's just see no it looks like i'm back on the carrier again waiting for that to change but it's not going to change because it wasn't suitable and i didn't notice when i was playing that game the the land wasn't suitable to drop a bunker or a base and you can see Dionysus is now an enemy island terrific so it's not telling me that the base wasn't suitable but looking at this footage it definitely did say that for a fraction of a second so what we're we gonna have to do well we're still back on the carrier now so we're gonna have to launch another walrus it looks like and let's just have a look would it be possible well no we're still gonna need to get over there in a walrus to put down the, the base itself so even if we blow everything up with the deck gun we're still gonna have to get out there with the walrus so let's clear a few more trees and hopefully this laser doesn't need recharging or anything like that and well hopefully that's fairly good now everything's clear or at least everything in range and i'm now in the middle of the island let's try again and drop successfully good so if we now keep going in this direction no cargo to drop that's fine we've dropped it already with the base now successfully building that's another defensive base and beacon is now an enemy island so with this scenario it's really difficult to get anywhere with the game but the enemy is fairly weak and fairly single-minded it will simply go towards your bases and if it gets blown up from one island it will then go to the next island and use all its resources and it's certainly more powerful than we are in our carrier so let's bring the resources back up again everything's still hunky dory carrier fuel's fine still got two bases left We've still got tons of armaments and four and four so yeah we don't really need anything at the moment so let's just see if it's managed to build anything set supplier priorities that's no good we need to supply transfer let's see and no it's not built any it's not built any for us at the moment then again it does take a minute for these things to pop up um having set that so we might have to wait a minute for that to appear and well in the meantime we can always transfer some fuel instead so let's just do that because we don't need anything else everything else is okay okay so yep still set up hopefully so that we've got three yep and yep that's fine so let's make our way now to the next base hopefully and you can see everything's fine for now let's click on the next base and it's now the enemy's right there look at that the enemy's just taking over our acheron acheron so the enemy's taking it over so i need to take these two before the enemy gets here and then it's going to be a bit of a stretch for the enemy to reach all the others because it's a bit too far for it to go from its islands to mine without running out of fuel so i mean it is possible i should have got that one to the south and so where are we at the moment tokamak tokamak 
So this is us approaching Chocomac now. Corset. And probably I'll be making this into another defensive island, considering the fact that the enemy's almost upon us. And that's not great for the resources, but at least it means that that's going to be okay. So let's check out the drones by going to our deck gun screen and clicking on the drones. We can put drones around our ship in a number of different configurations and they act as a defensive grid against different things. I think missiles will be stopped by those defensive drones. They'll simply launch into the sky and blow those up for us. So it's a good job if we're going into enemy territory to launch the defensive drones around us and then that will mean that we are defended. In the meantime, let's take a look at the island. It looks like we're now reverse turning our way towards it. There were tons and tons of scores for this game. Data Magazine gave this 70%. Amiga User International gave this 80 the current lemon score is 81, Amiga Joker gave it 82, Your Amiga gave this 82, Commodore user gave this 90, Zap gave it 92, Ace gave it 92, Generation 4 gave this 96, and the games machine gave Carry Command 97%. So that gives this an average score of 8.5 out of 10. You can see on the drone screen we can assign any spots for the drones to go to and then when you click on the assign drone button they will then float off to those zones. So clicking on that select that means that our drones will now pile up at the back of our ship because we're reversing onto the island there's no point putting defensive drones in front of it or to the side. If you put all the defensive drones at the back of our carrier hopefully that will be their most useful use and so you can see that's why the camera on the walrus pen points backwards because it assumes you're gonna go towards every island backwards and so those of our defensive drones number two I don't think well if we collide with those it won't instantly destroy our walrus they're harmless to us but if you have any enemy aircraft or anything from the enemy trying to attack us, those drones will come into action. You can even see on the map screen where the drones are around our particular ship and once they'll start getting destroyed unfortunately you can either have to move the carrier or defend it some other way. I'm not sure how many drones it stocks in itself, I think you have to buy them and develop them just like everything else. So that's Tokamak now hopefully deployed and then aiming ourselves between these drones. Again, they don't blow up for us, but we still have to negotiate around them in order to get anywhere near that docking cone. So hopefully now that's another defensive bunker all laid out on the island and we didn't need the defensive drones because it's a friendly island, you certainly don't need those on a friendly island but you do need them from now on if you're attacking any enemy islands and so we are now building things up, it's now friendly, are we going to bother making that stockpile island or are we not? Because we really don't want to move things to the front line if the front line is going to get attacked. But we're going to do it anyway. And if the enemy take over that base, they'll take over everything that we've built up so far. But we can, well it's fairly good. I think the enemy is going to be attacking this one next, one higher up. We've got one bunker left to build. 
Have we got any supplier transfer? Well, then again, we've just transferred. Yeah, we have, we've got it. So let's transfer another three over. And some of them, oh, a couple of mantas. Oh, but I can't fit them onto the supply pod. So can I fit one of them on? Yes. And so let's get that supply drone launched. And it doesn't look like I could fit any more fuel on there, but that's okay. And the enemy is going to be marching towards the island. It's now racing time now. Who's going to get to that island first? The ones on the periphery aren't too much of a worry. And I'm not too worried about that. If we can then take this island and maybe take the island that the enemy's got next. Oh, there you go. Well, the enemy's made that decision for us. We're now going to attack. Well, at least we know where the enemy carrier is now. But guess what? It's right there. I don't think that appears on our map but it's certainly there and so the next island it will be attacking is us so to take out its supply lines we need to attack it so we've now got it let's line it up program it in get back to where we need to go hopefully we've been resupplied now and it looks like what well, we're turning back towards the island I'm not sure whether that's particularly is that what we wanted to do? Uh, well, hmm. Well, okay, we'll, we'll leave it for now. It's moving, that's the main thing. And then, before we leave, we're still going to have to pull in our defensive drones so that we can reach top speed on open water. If we're dragging any drones around behind us, unfortunately that's going to slow us down. And yet again, if we go back to the back of the ship, through the Manta selection, we can actually see those drones returning, or those mines, whatever you want to call them, those automatic defence bunkers, they will now go back into our ship and be completely safe. So hopefully now, where are we? Well, let's just aim for that edgely. That's where we're going. Let's just aim for that, and hopefully, well, it's an enemy island, so that means from now on it's going to be a completely different game. Unfortunately, there's only 15 minutes of this review left, and so we're not going to see too much more of it. Again, if you see the enemy carrier dotted around, it's best to reverse into that, and then fire a few cruise missiles towards it. If it attacks you, then the defence mines will blow them up and if it doesn't you'll blow it up with the cruise missiles and i think you maybe need three or four of them to blow it up once its carrier's gone that's it you can then attack all of its bases at your leisure if you don't want that then avoid its carrier and simply take out its supply lines and force that to go backwards but the carrier can destroy us as well and fire mantas and walruses towards us so that's probably not a good idea to leave it hanging around so there are at least two ways to complete the game one of those is get rid of the carrier and then the island and then the other way is to get rid of the resupply lines of the enemy and then the island so you've got at least two different ways of doing it it's kind of flimsy but what do you expect for 1988 you know in 1988 we're only just getting barely enough good games on the amiga and this, just like all the others, is, as far as I know, an ST port. So, let's have a look. Manta Bays. We've got all those in the hangar. It would probably be a good idea to repair anything at this point whilst we're waiting. And we've got that Tomac, whatever it was. The one that we've just put a military base on is now being attacked. Luckily, it's a military base. So, guess what? Even if it is attacked, the enemy isn't going to get very far with it. We can put some missiles on our Manta, but that will unbalance it because I don't think we can fit four on, we can only fit three on. And that isn't too much of a problem, you can see it comes up unbalanced payload, and I don't think you can launch if it's got an unbalanced payload. So, let's see, a fragmentation bomb, let's put that on, and, well, I don't think I can fit the lasers, Um it's already... Well, I don't think I'm fit anymore, but I can't, well, payload exceeded. So, maybe I'm going to have to 
take those missiles off of it again and I think you can do that by simply returning back to that bay no drones active let's pull the drones out because we're approaching enemy island so what was I doing all right okay well we still need to turn around so that those drones are pointing backwards and sometimes if you put this thing into full reverse it can help speed up that process so I think carry command even though it's fairly flimsy underneath it does look complicated on the surface and you have tons of different armaments you've only got two attack vehicles but you have got an enemy to attack and definitely given the fact this is 1988 it's definitely a step above some games and I really think that this tried its best to reimagine what was possible on a 16-bit computer not only a flight sim but also a battle sim and a carrier sim in one game and you haven't seen too many of those dotted around not even on the PS2 did we get a carrier command type of game so we got plenty of other types of games but not necessarily carrier so it's definitely something to watch out for and look at that we're trying to blow up its defensive bunkers on magnification 8 I really don't think those lasers are going to get there on magnification 8 and we're still moving backwards towards the island that's its defense bunker and it is possible if you really lay into that thing to blow it up but it helps if it's pointing towards us which it isn't it's pointing away from us but we can blow up this tower and so any big objects we can blow up we can even blow up this building even though it hasn't even been built yet And you can see on the bottom, ah, Tawak, Tawak has been repulsed, good. Anyway, you can see at the bottom the direction that the gun is facing. And if you blow it up, hopefully if you hit something, then they'll have to build that thing all over again. I'm not sure whether there was any kind of storyline to this game, probably. But back in the day, I was baffled by the unlabeled buttons and I didn't really see the point of the game or what I was supposed to do with it but peering beyond the surface it's not too difficult all your defensive systems are here on the deck gun screen otherwise you can deploy a manta or a walrus to do it directly and I think there is even an automatic pilot on those so you can attack an island automatically so I haven't actually tried that out but you can see well there isn't much attacking this on this particular island so what are we going to do well uneven payload it's saying can we launch no because it's an uneven payload so we can't launch the manta that we've built up so let's return to that let's take off those missiles let's put some more in if we can so it's all balanced now hopefully we can take off And see those defensive drones all fanned out behind our carrier and what to take out well you might be surprised to learn that you don't have to take out the main base in order to destroy the island but you would be probably surprised to learn that we're not going to be able to blow it up I don't think during this playthrough because it's facing away from us let's see it's just fired a missile we've just dropped a bomb and Manta 1 has been destroyed so that didn't last long hence that's why you should build more mantas and more walruses because you will go through them very quickly once you're attacking the enemy island so do we have one no it's been destroyed but we have number two and we did drop a bomb but we didn't really get to see if it did anything for us so what a quicker fragmentation bomb let's do it again and we didn't get to launch any missiles either hence that's why you really need quite a few but there's 30 on board let's waste another two of them and let's try again it 
so you don't have to blow up everything on the base but the weak defences are fairly easy and those warehouses would seem fairly easy so but anyway let's get the pod ready to drop the bomb again on the bunker and it's been destroyed we've been destroyed it again so we're really getting through those defenses now and so what am i going to do well i'm going to put in a defensive command post i'm going to send that in to the island that might seem crazy but there's a reason for it if you build that away from the enemy's command bunker that can help us take over the entire island as long as the enemy's command bunker is the only thing that's left built upon it so if we go over here away from those missile launches we should be able to get rid of these barns or whatever they are these factory warehouses i think they're supposed to be and that means that it's a factory island so that's a lot easier than trying to knock out a military island and so walrus has now reached the beach that's trying to build up another defensive tower and the factory that it was trying to build it looks like it's already built it so i wonder what i can do here i don't think no no laser to fire it looks like i haven't even brought a laser did it bring any missiles I did bring some missiles, unfortunately I'm not aiming for the entrance of that base, I'm aiming to the side of it and it just impacted on the surface. Finally the radar works, showing us all the enemy structures and it's not a suitable place to drop our command bunker, what happens maybe if I blow, oh I can't blow this up because I haven't brought my laser, I brought one missile and I've used it. Uh, so. Have I got any more? No, I haven't got any more missiles. So I'm gonna have to I think I'm gonna have to hang around here and I'm gonna have to well it's building another defensive tower unfortunately. I'm gonna have to hang around here and what can I do? Well I can launch another walrus if it's got another laser. Or I can launch another manta and see if I can blow up those defence areas. Or I can even get on the deck gun and see if we can blow it up that way. Unfortunately, again, I'm aiming to the rear of that bunker, not the front of it, because the front has got a slot there where we can fire in our missiles and guns. So that's not going to work either. And we can even reverse. Let's reverse a little bit more towards the island. And that might mean that the deck gun hits a little bit more. Let's keep an eye on our depth. Maybe about there. Now what we're going to do, well, the deck gun will remain on target. Missile is heading for the carrier. Well that should get blown up. Drone 2 is now being destroyed. So one of our drones has got rid of that missile. But really could do with getting rid of those missile towers. As a top priority to stop that keep happening. Until you do, well I can blow the factory up, that's no problem. And so you do, it's going to keep launching missiles towards us. And that's, well, I think that is a missile launcher actually. Let's see what that can do. And that looks like a water tower. The missile is heading for the carrier. That's not too bad, but we're looking for that big defence tower that it's just built. That's my tank, by the way. Where's that big defensive tower that it was building? That's one. Oh, look at that missile flying towards us. Now really heading towards that 3D. Ah, here we go. Finally, it's not that out. That's a good idea. It'll start building it straight away, but that's all right. It just means we're not going to get any more missiles. Or at least a few of them. Um, we're still not close enough to destroy that one. This one's safe. That one's too far away. That's too far away, I think. Um, well, it looks like we're heading backwards, but we can't be. We must have stopped. So now I think that this place is actually clear enough to drop a command bunker. But I'd dearly love to blow up that enemy 
Uh, laser overheating in this game. Overheating, just like Elite that we saw. Elite 2, there is an overheat function. So have we got anything still alive? We've got another walrus. What can we do with that? Well, we're still waiting to take out those, what's this? Command Center Virus Bomb. Let's try that. Because I was under the illusion, while I was playing this game, that I had to take out the Command Center in order to basically commandeer the island. So we've got to select the right walrus for a start. But that isn't the case, or at least not on a manufacturing island, but this is why I'm wasting my time trying to destroy it. I think the sounds in this game are just enough to flash it out, there isn't too much to write home about, but I think this came on maybe one disc, because it's just a vector game. Look at that, we can even destroy things bit by bit. And that's gone, that's all right, that's the bit one, well, okay, hold on a minute, let's just check out that base. You can see there's a red mark in front of the base, that's actually the slot in front of it. And that's where we need to go. Unfortunately, this laser's only got so much power. And it can only fire maybe 20 shots out of it before it runs out of power. So in that case, I've just wasted all of those shots firing into the side of that building. And there's the virus bomb, but unfortunately I didn't launch that through the slot in the front of the building. And so therefore the virus bomb to blow up the base is not blown it up. So that's something to watch out for. You can launch that through the slot in the front, just like posting it through a letterbox. Just like that. And then maybe you can get somewhere with it again. No laser to fire. That's unfortunate. I don't have any more missiles left or anything else. I don't think. No, I just had that bomb and those lasers. So that's two out of those mantas. Oh dear. So that's two walruses on there. Already on the island. Completely spent now. And I still haven't blown up the enemy's command bunker. These frag bombs are supposed to blow up everything. I'm supposed to do anyway, but in my experience, I haven't noticed them to actually do that with the main bunkers. And it looks like we're still attempting to blow up the main bunker. Instead of all those warehouses. And I don't think it's going to do as many favours, considering that we've got a walrus parked outside of that base. Already, so it's probably going to blow up our walrus if we decide to attack it. But we're going to decide to attack it anyway. Well, Manta 3 has been damaged, but it doesn't say anything about... Well, well, now Manta 3 has been destroyed. So, there isn't too much left alive now on our particular carrier. This is our first enemy base, and it's already destroyed everything that I had going on. Literally everything. So, we've got a few walruses, but they haven't got energy to fire anywhere. And the mantas have been blown up. So, if you don't have any spare aircraft by now, well, that's definitely one way to get destroyed. If you don't have any spare aircraft, there you go, drop successfully. But, yeah, you don't have any spare armaments, then you're going to have to buy them and repair them and make them and manufacture them by now because there are quite a few enemy islands to go to knock out and if you waste two or three armaments every time and at least two or three vehicles, you're going to quickly run out. And Walrus 2 has been destroyed. Which Walrus are we actually using at the moment? Walrus 1 is outside the docking cone. So that's probably what it was. Let's put us back onto the thing. Walrus 2, Walrus 1. So we have rescued 1. And we have deployed the base. It's still green yet. But it looks like the enemy has been repulsed because we launched a defensive base there and we've just put another one on the island. So. We don't know where the enemy is. If the enemy is repulsed, then it has to get back to a friendly island, which in this case is Edgley, 
which we've just taken over, which means now that it's going to have to go out of its way to get some fuel before it makes another run at us towards that trade route. So while it's going backwards to get some more fuel, well, you can see that the base here has now demolished the enemy base. It's deconstructed everything, and it will deconstruct all the enemy's armaments whilst it's building its own up. So let's see, I think that's still the enemy... Uh, I think that's my base, and that's deconstructing the enemy's warehouses. So, yeah, we should have now taken over. Yep, it's deconstructing them, so we've now taken over, finally, that land. So, thank you once again for viewing this play guide. I hope now you know what all the buttons do. And you can launch those defence drones and guided missiles and everything else. It's not too difficult. It just looks extremely complicated on the surface. And with all these barely labelled buttons dotted around, it's fairly difficult to control it. So that's my score that I've got so far, 35,026. And I've been playing this for almost two hours. We've got those eight islands. So I thank you once again, and we'll see you again in another one sometime soon. Thank you.